Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Sitting down here by 2005 at Nissan Altima 25S model. Uh, it was brought to us by another shop to have an ECM put in it. They said it's nuked. I uh, asked them if they wanted me to look at it first uh, because of the symptoms. I kind of encouraged them to do that. Uh, this thing blows fuses and it blows the fuse particularly for the throttle control motor throttle motor control I think is how the fuse was labeled on the box uh, so I've done a little poking here I haven't gotten a uh, full diagnosis yet but I wanted to see which fuse is blown what feet you know what circuit it runs on and you know try to make an assessment from there perhaps you know if it is ECM I told him I said well you know I'm not gonna charge you to diagnose him because you've already made the call curiosity has gotten the best of me and I wanted to know myself before we put an ECM in it and you know went through that whole rigmarole and that's where I'm at. So the fuse that blows, let me get my little, let me get my little probe around here so I can show you, is what Nissan calls fuse number 44. So, uh, and they've already replaced the fuse box because they made the call on the fuse box and said it was bad and replaced that. Of course, it still blew the fuse, so then they've made the call on the ECM now. Uh, so it's this fuse right here. It's the third one in on the bottom row. And right now, I've got power on both sides. But I also have, the throttle motor relay removed. Now, if I put the relay in and it closes, well, the fuse blows, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, it's a standard, you know, four pin relay. This fuse controls the load side and the control side of the relay. And I verified that the power is making it down to the relay, obviously because it blows. So I've got power on two pins down there. Uh, let me get a diagram here for you. I printed one out for us so we can have a little look-see at it. So here is uh, fuse number 44, 15 amp. It comes in, like I say, it feeds both sides of the relay. And uh, the power coming out, so the orange wire is just the control for the ECM. It grounds that and then closes the relay. As soon as that happens, bang, the fuse blows. So our power comes out on this single red wire. And as long as our diagram is right, the only thing it feeds is this VMOT. So I, I assume it's motor voltage for the throttle actuator. I have gone as far as removing the relay, but then prior to doing that, I simply unplugged the throttle body just to see if it would blow, and it does. So that eliminates our throttle body, which is brand new from our list of suspects. And where I'm going to focus my efforts on now is, you know, is the ECM shorted, you know, blowing this fuse? You know, let's say there's a dead short inside the ECM. Is that shorted and blows the fuse? Or is there a short somewhere in this wire? Or is there a short, you know, inside this new uh, used fuse box, which, you know, I find that maybe kind of odd if the old one blew it and the new one still blows it. So I think what uh, my next step is going to be, and that's where I want to bring you guys along, because this looked like it was actually starting to get interesting, is the easiest way, is it the ECM? Take the ECM out of the equation and then power up the load side of that circuit you know, particularly just the red wire, and see if it blows. The circuit breaker on the power probe is the perfect way to do that because once we remove the ECM, you know, we can't use conventional methods like, you know, cycling the key because, well, the ECM is going to be unplugged and that relay is not going to turn on. So that's what I want to do next. I want to get to the ECM, unplug it, power up this wire. If that fuse still blows, the circuit breaker still blows, now we know it has nothing to do with the ECM. So hopefully that makes sense to you. And uh, that's what I'm going to do anyways. That's a little easier said than done. <laughs> so the ECM is hidden behind the glove box. You got to take the whole stinking mess out. Uh, so now the ECM is unplugged. And what I want to do is our control side should be open circuited. So there's power. This should be open. And it is not. So that is showing to ground. And the wire that I'm probing technically should be open right now. I am on this red wire right here. We are in the uh, fuse box or the intelligent power distribution module fuse box we'll call it and i'm probed in right here where this relay is and that comes out to right here that should be an open circuit so i'm curious if it's going to blow the fuse circuit breaker blown baby and the ecm is completely unplugged now that begs the question is it shorted out in here? And I think the easiest way to do that is to determine which one of these plugs it goes to. It says pin 40, 
42, not 47, pin 42. And it's either connector E121 or 124. Pin 42 is in E124. I think I grabbed it. I did. E124, E124, E124! You sunk my battleship. And that is. I'm gonna look at my diagram. E124 is this little guy right here. The second one down. These wires are awful short on this thing. So it's the second connector down, third one over, and that should be, oh, it's right up on top. Look at that. It should be this wire. Okay, and that still shows short the ground. The best thing we can do, uh, we want to eliminate this fella. Uh, we need to unplug it. And the wires are stretched tighter and tight. We need to unplug some other things. So we can dig our way down to it. We'll unplug that one. Then we'll unplug this one. I'm not getting my little digits in there. Let me get a screwdriver. Let's see. It's got a little push tab on it. I got two screwdrivers. Good thing. Oh, come on. When you're gonna swear, just hum. That's a little song I made up called Don't Swear on YouTube Videos. I need to get a bigger screwdriver <laughs> and get a bigger pry bar. Just trying to push the tab and get the connector out at the same time is a task I can't seem to handle. Release. Did I tell you they put a fuse box in? I did, didn't I? And the other thing that kind of concerned me, the old fuse box lays in on the seat. And in place of the fuse, they had a jumper wire, like a piece of speaker wire. That concerned me. There. Now we're digging down to the gold. Let me see if I can hit the release tab on that one. Can you get in there, fella? So that has me a little concerned, the fact that somebody has bypassed it with, you know, a wire. I see in the back of the car an alternator, several other kibbles and bits. I go to this car when well, the wires are stretched pretty tight. I gotta see if I can re hit the release tab. They sure make these things easier to plug in than they do unplug. I don't want to break it either. So I'm gonna hit the release tab, try to wiggle the connector out with my other screwdriver. Hey, look at that. Like a surgeon. Okay, so now we have eliminated the fuse box from our possible list of suspects here. This, this is still shorted to ground and we got big trouble. <laughs> oh baby. So now the fuse box should be open, which it is. Fuse box is open circuited. So our fuse box is not the culprit. However, our red wire is and the ECM is still unplugged. And it still blows the fuse. I am going to make the call. At this point, that our red wire right here from here to here is shorted. That's my that's my call. Okay. <laughs> What's that mean? Well, I don't know. It means you gotta go fishing now. This looks lovely. Where's that thing run? Where's the light? Anybody got a flashlight? Where's the flashlight? All right, little fella left it inside. I'm gonna make sure that is the computer. <laughs> yeah, I believe that's the computer. It's got a big connector on it, so I'll make sure there's a couple modules in there. Make sure we unplug the right one. Where does these wires go? Oh, lovely. Freaking lovely. It goes down under the uh, reservoir, up and around town. Looks like it goes through this little harness or thingy. Oh, this should be freaking cute. It also says it goes to a connector, E20, F32, F32, E20, what the heck is E20, E20 is a connector, I don't see it on here, but see we got a connector here, so if we can find that connector we can split the system in half and say well is it short here or is it short there, that would be the next wisest thing to do, of course stupid Nissans, 
I always have a hard time finding their OEM information. Um, F54, F32, E20. I'm not seeing, they're not showing E20 down here, so we should find that, find where that lives, but gosh, it can't be far away. Because, I mean, the wires only run from under this. Oh, it's not even half bolted in. Well, heck, let's get a bolt thingy, remover. What do they call them? Spanners? Remove that. Spanner. Where, where are we? England? We don't call them spanners. All right. Let's lift this up, see if we get any visual clues. Oops, set that to the side. Step on stuff down here. Okay, we don't want to wiggle too much. Visual inspection. Wonder what's under this. Wonder what's under here. Boy, this thing can't go very far, right? This harness here looks like it's pretty well intact. Hopefully it doesn't do like a hula hoop and run around the side of the driver's side or some stupid thing. Wouldn't doubt it. Like, oh, short it out behind the headlight or something. Um, I tell you what, we better find, before we get stupid here, let's find where E20 F32 is. Because I don't want to find out it goes over there and then comes back and it doesn't go the sensible way, which we would think is right here and right to the computer. Because honestly, this looks pretty good. I don't see where anybody's touched it. Not to say it couldn't be shorted out under here. Okay, somebody has been under there. Take that back. I didn't look real good, did I? Let's, we'll have a quick look, but I don't want to waste a lot of time. Because if we find where that connector is, that could be, that could be key. Let's just have a look under here, make sure somebody didn't get in here with a razor knife or something. I assume this just sits in a plastic tray the whole way not against the metal but you never know let's see all right i'm just gonna give that a quick little quick little look see dun, 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 dun. this is all plastic goes around looks like it stays in plastic factory taped all right well I'll tell you what, we'll leave that up for right now. I'm going to find that connector. Let's get back on track. F32 E20. We're on this wire. We determined by unplugging it here, unplugging it here, the wire is still short. So, after hours of research, what seems like hours, I have looked for <laughs> F32. Forgot what I'm looking for. So, I printed out a diagram of all their connectors. F32 plugs into E20. Look where E20 is. That is over on the driver's side. How? And what's E27? F. Man, this is more like F U at this point. Let's see. F32. Look. This is freaking over on the driver's side. I would have swore that thing would have just went straight up to the computer. No. It brings it all the way around town. F32 and then evidently over to there over to there I just want to see something here E27 that's E27 it's got to be the ECM connector F32 has an asterisk by it be sure to connect and lock connectors securely after repair work failure to do so may set ECM trouble codes do not connect these in case working work workflow or trouble diagnosis why do I print on two sides is it because I'm cheap and I want to save paper? Probably. E27. Bear with me, folks. I'm just thinking out loud. So I say we go over there. We find F32. It is a 8-pin connector. Somewhere is over on the driver's side area. According to this. Uh, yep, so there it is. It's over here. It's up by the cowl. What's up, Mrs. O? Um, it's gonna go. It's gonna go. You're gonna leave me here to slave away. Ah, there's the air compressor. Good time. Oh, there's a bunch of uh, little connectors right here. It's, uh, oh, look at that. We still got our screwdriver out here, I think. Wrong one. Let's 
pull this off. So this must be these connectors right up here. At least we can cut the system in half so we know which way we're going. Because those are, yeah, I think somebody's already been down this whole road. They must have been super close. Yeah, because look, this clamp's still off. Or maybe they did that when they put the new throttle body on it. I don't know. Let's get this out of the way. Okay. Got quite a little pile of stuff here. Um, there are some connectors. How many wires were in ours? I just told you guys a minute ago. Somebody remind me. Eight. Eight wires, and we are looking for pin number seven. F32 pin number seven is going to be red, so that's a clue for us. How many wires do you have? You got eight. You got more than eight. You got more than eight. So, is it this connector? It doesn't tell us what color it is or anything, just gives us a roundabout area in which it lives in. Let's stick this down, hopefully everybody can see. Let's unplug this. Easier said than done. <sighs> Nissan's got it out for me last week. I ate a pick right through the middle finger. Well, I guess that's a couple weeks ago. I'm still milking it though. I'm trying to get a connector undone. And boy, I got myself good. Oh, I'm not going to make the same stupid mistake. Let me get a smaller screwdriver. They're sharper. And they pierce skin a lot easier than a blunt one. Done. Yes, baby. There you are. Now let's see if pin number seven is indeed red. There's a red. Let's see now. Now in Nissan, I can never remember their stupid color coding. If this is the harness side, if that's the connector side, sometimes it's a facing side. I think it depends on if it's black or white. It's uh, it's awful. It's number seven. And go like that. I believe that's how you do these ones. I can never remember. Let's see, is it? I just want to make sure it's red on both halves of the connector here where it plugs in. That's red with yellow. White and black and red. White and black, red. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. If you only worked on one product line, you could keep this stuff in your memory bank pretty easy, but unfortunately working on a bunch of different car makes, it's hard to remember who does what and how they do it. Make sure there's nothing fancy up here shorted. So I guess with that disconnected, let's go over and see if our wire is still shorted. And we were the red wire in this connector here. still shorted so theoretically if we were in the right connector over here one half that's going to be shorted the other half isn't that is just my theory so let's see where's the red wire here that is the second one down I'm gonna have to get a little t-pen one two buckle my shoe there's that side let's see if this side is shorted that side is open and the ECM is unplugged, so technically this side of it should have the short, which will eliminate the wiring from here to the computer, which is good because that looks like it's more of a pain in the hoo how to get to. How do you unconnect this thing? Frankly, I don't know. I really don't care. We're just going to go into it. We're going to go into it. It is the second pin down. And I can see it. Let's see, make sure that's shorted. Second pin down. It is shorted. That's the next one up. Second one down. Second one down is shorted. That is the right wire. Everything is disconnected. And it's showing a dead short to ground. 
So at this point, where does this harness go? And according to our other diagram, it goes freaking everywhere. Here's this diagram. The possibilities are endless, folks. It, uh, let me turn this down. Get my pointing device. That's too bright. So we're up here. This sucker goes down all the way over. Crap biscuit. All right, if I was a wire, where would I break? Where would I short? It's obviously, probably, obviously, probably. Can you use them words together? <laughs> it's probably rubbed through on something. So without a lot of fiddling, where does that come? That goes in there. I have to assume it's going that way. I would hope. Right? Let me just get the other diagram here. This is the E20 side of it. And that one shows going up and around the cowling. Gosh, I gotta figure out which half is which now. So here's what I've determined. After extensive research, which harness is it? Which way does it run? I believe if I'm correct, it is the one that runs, it's gonna run back up through this tray. And even just visually looking at it, when I follow this down and around, most of that big harness goes into this uh, sub panel, whatever it, it may be. I'm gonna start wiggling stuff at this point, but we need to know what's gonna fix it or potentially where the short is. Like I say, I suspect, because it is a dead short to the ground that the wire is rubbed through somewhere. It's more so than, you know, obviously it's not open. It's a short circuit. I've got my four amp headlight over there on the other side, the SMA one we made. I've got it plugged into the red wire and I've got the other end of it over here where we can provide it battery power because that, you know, being shorted provides the ground. I did look on the back side of the engine uh, I'm pretty sure the harness is going to be this one, the best I can tell, but there is a harness that runs the back side of the engine that kind of goes up over towards ECM2. It looks like there's a vacuum canister there that's busted off. A lot of fiddling has been done on the back of the engine. I'm going to get you guys turned where you can see the light. We're going to do some wiggling now. Do not wiggle unless you have a light or something in place so you know if you get to the problem, then you know where it is. So like I said, you can see the harness runs through here and down. Those are starter wires, and that's the other end of it. This is the end that's good, you know, that we know is good. So I don't believe, even though everything is busted back here, so that's wiggling that whole harness and nothing is changing. And then it comes down in the front, like I say, and that harness goes to this, but according to our diagram, if I'm under the right deal, it should be this one that goes up. Just need to wiggle your wipers, lady. Look at that, second video on SMA. <laughs> you guys remember the cobalt we did? If you pushed on the wiper blades, the engine would stall. Wham, bam, bino, there it is. Open circuit, closed circuit. So, that means, there's an extra bolt here, in case you need that. Our problem is up by the wiper transmission somewhere where this harness goes through. What do you think about that, Marie? I think that's crazy. If we just pick up on her wipers in the car. So if side. she turns her windshield wipers on, it would make her, her engine stop? Uh, no, well, it would make it go into reduced power mode, so yeah, blow the fuse once they parked. Nice. Obviously, there's something up inside this cowl that is shorted up. So now we're on to step two. Where do the wires go from there? We gotta pull this whole mess off and have a look-see. That's pretty exciting, folks. I didn't know you were a common thief. Uh, you know, only on Tuesdays. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, tomorrow, watch out. Let's see here. side cutters. We're going to pull up these little plastic clips here. Can you guys see where I am? Of course you can. So that's exciting. Who's excited? I'm excited. Doesn't really do much for you. Yeah. 
Oh, light just turned back on. I was hoping we could just have a little looky. Oh, I got too far. What in the thunder? Oh man. I might just go way back under there. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah, super convenient. All right, folks, I'm gonna work on getting this plastic doodad off here. Doesn't look like it'll be too hard. Well, I gotta pull the stinky wiper arms though, and that's what kind of sucks. Oh. I'll pull the wiper arms, I'm gonna get the cowl off, and then uh, we'll go from there. It's something right over here, because you flink flickering over there. So just tell her not to hit windshield wipers on, she'll be fine. Just wedge them up a little bit, put a fuse yeah. in it. All right. Mary here tells me that she would help, but she wore her good. What'd right. you call it? It's it's a jacket. Her good jacket. Yes. I tell her it's a sweater. It's not a sweater. Show them close up. Show them close up of the sleeves. It's a knitted style, but it's not a sweater. It's a sweater. No, it's not. We'll leave a poll to people. Sweater or what do you call it? It's a jacket. Jacket. I call it a sweater. The cowl is removed. I have not opened up the bad spot, but I'm pretty sure I know where it's at. To give you guys a clue, because you can't see the light, I've got the power probe back probed over there. That's shorted, that's open. He's starting to catch my drift. Okay, and I believe, let me, let me go unhook that, let's see. There we go, that's unhooked. I believe our problem is right here because it looks like the harness runs through here and it's sitting directly on top of the wiper transmission because somebody forgot to click that little wire holder thing shut at some point in its life. So I think if we pull the harness out, we're gonna find, if I wasn't such a weakling. No, you wore your good sweater. I don't okay, wanna... that's what I was gonna say. I wore my good sweater, can I help you? Oh, so you agree it's a sweater? It's a jacket. I just call it a sweater, because that's what you call it. I'm gonna call it a sweater. It's still a jacket. Why am I using this hand tool? Oh! That's gonna cost you. Let's see. I just wanna get these bolts out here. It's they'll come out easily. This is such a cave, man. I gotta go get a power tool of some sort. That's better. That's even better. Now, that should move. Oh baby, you're coming to the reveal. Dun, dun, dun. I thought it's gonna be a little more dramatic than that. You can ask if we really need intense music for that. I do. Dun, 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 dun. You know, something like they do on the movies. There she is. Yep. A whole bunch of them rubbed through. Look at a little mouse hole. I don't see the red wire though. I see blue. I see green. This is gonna suck. I can give you guys a bird's eye view. So there's the hole. Can you see it? I can't see what you can see. She's all chowdered up because of the wiper deal there. We're gonna have to see about getting this harness loose. All the other connectors are held on. I'm gonna see about getting this thing loose, getting it out, getting it opened up. Wow, that's a really piss poor design because if that thing broke on its own, you know, let's say it didn't have any human involvement and it broke on its own, man, it has no place to go except into the wiper transmission where it's just gonna get chewed up. It is man, basically like a car surgeon. I just found the, the plugged artery. I don't know if that's really a good analogy here. I found the pinched nerve, how's that? That's probably a better analogy. There's my red wire. I wonder what the blue wire is. I wonder what other circuits are going to be fixed because of this. There she is. There's our famous red wire. Well, the good news is she does not need a computer. So good thing we did not just follow instructions and replace the computer. And there it is. There is our shorted out red wire. Short the ground. Shorten on the windshield wipers. And whatever the blue circuit is. I don't know, I don't really care, but that's a big, look at that big honky-tonk on it too there, the big uh, black with the yellow. 
don't know if that's a ground, it's got to be a ground wire. I think it's what color need. Yeah, it's, that's a ground wire, but there's a big black or red. Man, imagine if this thing rubbed through on the uh, on a high amperage power circuit. I feel like I'm whispering right in your ear right now. I'm actually kind of hugging the camera. All right, now I gotta fix these. Yay. Yay for me. It looks like there's some more. It looks like there's some smoke in here. Oh yeah. Somebody, uh, you know what, you know what, you know what burnt them freaking wires is probably when they uh, stuck that jumper wire in the fuse box. That's probably what did that. That's probably where the extra heat came from. <laughs> Lovely, that should be fun to fix. So there is the final fix. Well, I fixed the wire and then, uh, believe it or not, that white retainer was not broke. It snapped together just fine. As an extra security measure, I added a zip tie here loosely you know, on this harness. So if for whatever reason this you know opened on its own, which I highly doubt because it snapped together really well, at least the zip tie is going to hold it up off from you know the wiper transmission. Uh, so we fixed the red wire, we fixed the blue wire, taped it all back up nicely, lots of extra layers of tape. It should be good now if we put it together. Of course put everything back together, ECM, all that business. So I'm going to get busy. I'm going to put the wiper cowl back on, put the blades back on, put the air ducked back in. Of course we can plug our little connector back together here. Yeah, I'll get that plugged back in, however that goes. Uh, get all this stuff sorted, connector plugged back in. And just for reference, if you are looking for the ECM, you do have to pull the entire glove box out and it lives uh, way up under here and you have, to, you have to break it loose or you don't break it, take the bolts out of it to be able to get the connector off because the connector will not come off uh, unless you remove the ECM, which is kind of a pain in the neck. So I'm gonna throw all this together and technically the car should start and run now. Oh, and rev up. All right, so we are going to, so the codes original, I don't remember if I showed you guys this or not, were the 1126 and the 1122 and I believe that was it. And I think I mentioned to you that I had unplugged the throttle body to see if the short would go away. So I created those ones. So uh, these top two were the initial complaint that it came in with. I do want to take and clear these out. And like I said, I made it blow that fuse, you know, immediately. Okay, so there's that moment of truth. I did not put the glove box back in yet, but everything else is together. Okay, so before it would always start and run engine light would come out immediately which it has not and you could not rev the car up oh yeehaw we'll make sure it has no codes showing right away no codes it revs up make sure our wipers work sound lovely what do you know well i guess that's it we're done we're done memory super short <laughs> you guys can see the litter of fuses they were going through and like I say here's the fuse box that they made the call on the first time and when this thing first came in of course you can see how it's kind of melted out down in there in number 44 this was in place of it uh, which was very concerning to me they had it kind of wedged in there I just pulled on it to see if it was but uh, so you know they stuck a piece of you know looks like speaker wire I guess well yeah I guess it would be because here's the rest of it laying on the seat Some codes that PO420, so it sounds like a cat. Well, I mean, it's got a broken flex pipe from the sounds of it, so that's probably why that one was coming. All the rest are for the throttle control. So, I guess that's that. Uh, it definitely did not need the intelligent power I don't know, fuse box, whatever it was they called it. Just a short. Folks, that's it. The car's together, it starts, it runs, and it revs up. And it also did not need an ECM, uh, which they made the call on. I'm glad we were able to convince them to let me take a look at it before we needlessly replace that. Uh, hopefully, everybody followed along. I think I may have lost track of where I was heading with it there. Uh, hopefully, it all fits together seamlessly in the end. But long story short, uh, we'll just recap. All we did is identify the customer complaint, you know, the fuse that was blowing, uh, lots of fuses. And then the next best thing to do after that, don't get sidetracked with the trouble codes, but look at that circuit. And that's what we did. We 
you know, pulled up a simplified circuit, we found that fuse 44, which feeds this red power wire going to the ECM, and then ultimately the power comes out to control the throttle control motor, uh, to run it forward and back, you know, give you your, your throttle as the ECM sees fit. We did quickly eliminated, and this is what you want to do when you have a short, you know it's a dead short to ground, how can we cut the circuit in half is always what you want to ask yourself, or cut it in thirds, or, you know, figure out is it on this end or that end, or in the fuse box. First thing I did, unplug the throttle actuator. Unplug it, boom, still blows the fuse. Okay, well now what? Well, let's cut it down again. You know, we've already unplugged this. Well, let's unplug the whole ECM. Unplug the ECM, boom, it still shorts. Go down, unplug it again, you know, find another half of it, which we ended up finding that connector, which we couldn't determine, E20, F32, whichever one you want to call it. Unplug that, which side is the short on? Is it on the side that runs from here to the ECM, or is it from there to the fuse box? And we also, I guess with that being said, we also eliminated the fuse box as a possible suspect by unplugging it up here. And then, you know, we've seen that that circuit went open at that point. So that's all we did. Um, it's going to be whether you're working on a throttle control as we were on this Nissan or a short in a tail light, a short in anything, that's the way you're going to find it. Once you identify the circuit, the wire, the fact that it's shorted, try to split the circuit in half. If there's not any connectors, there's other ways that you can do it, you know, following current and stuff, or sometimes find a good spot where you can fix the wire and cut it. That can save you a whole lot of time, particularly if the wire you see comes inside. You're like, well, is it shorted under the hood? Is it shorted inside? Is it shorted in its trunk? You know, it depends on how the circuit design is. I'll cut it. You know, there's no shame in just taking the wire, cutting it in half as long as you fix it correctly. You know, solder, heat shrink, uh, crimp and seal connector, whatever it is that you use. Uh, there's no shame in actually cutting the wire to shorten your diagnostic process. Just pick a good spot and something that's logical. And that's it. So we're going to keep going. Questions, comments, criticisms, concerns in the comment box below. And while you're down there, click subscribe, ring the bell, and all that stuff. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.